it is always hard to leave the ones you love, to leave those that you care about so much. Whether it's a warrior traveling abroad to fight a battle overseas, whether it's someone that works for a mining company, an oil company, traveling to a distant land to work and has to leave their family for six months, a year, whatever the case might be, that separation is painful. It is also part of being responsible and being committed to those that you are leaving because it is for them that you are doing this. It takes a certain type of family, a certain type of spouse, certain friends, loved ones, a certain type of person to be able to deal with the reality that in some circumstances, someone will leave to go work abroad or go fight abroad and to be able to still support them and understand where exactly this is all going, what this is about, how much it means to the home front. In the case of Miyamoto Masashi thinking about leaving and traveling throughout his different uh, areas that, that he fought in as one warlord was fighting another, you know, you didn't have the type of transportation that you have today. You didn't have the ability to get back on a train or a plane and fly back home. Uh, when you left for battle, you left for a long time. There may have been very limited communication. We have far more communication now, even the ability to do video communication like this with your family. And I think back to those times and for him to think about this, think about how long he left in order to fight abroad. And we still see this to this day. We still see this happening to this day. There are jobs in just about every field where you don't have to go anywhere. You can stay right in your hometown. However, there are times when either obligations or opportunities make it the reality that you're going to have to leave. And as that individual that is traveling and leaving the people you care about, understand that ultimately this is for them, this is for the family, this is for the nation that you're fighting for. And that helps you understand the responsibility and the weight of your commitment in this separation. Another form of separation is when someone you care about passes on. When that happens, it can be very sad. Different cultures have different ways of dealing with it. Some cultures will throw a celebration of life, talking about everything that they did. Uh, other cultures uh, perform mourning for extended periods of time. I would ask you to think in this manner about this type of separation. What did I get from that person? What did they leave me as a legacy? What did I learn from them as my mentor? And likewise, while we are alive, we should ask, what will I leave behind for others? How will I mentor those who come after me? What will my legacy be 
and I don't mean in this grand form of, you know, uh, trying to have some kind of a building named after you. I think all these things, they crumble. I think they crumble to the ground eventually. But if you are able to pass down guidance and be a mentor for others, that is something that lasts many more generations than bridges and major statues and and buildings. Because you make generational change with that. You actually improve the person. And as you improve that person, you improve the future generations that come after them. So what are you leaving when it comes your time to separate? What are you leaving for the next generation? A form of separation where an individual has mentally left you. This is true and at the time of this video recording prevalent in the world in the form of addiction. When someone has separated from you emotionally and so in some cases physically they may be somewhere else where you don't know where they are in the same town or a state away but they have separated from you mentally. They have basically separated from the world mentally, utilizing an addiction to some kind of substance. You remember them how they were before. It's very tough. You still love them. You have not given up on them. You try to come up with a plan, but ultimately it's up to them if they're going to go through with it. You can't help somebody who won't help themselves. In separation due to addiction or depression, when people leave, when they leave you and go somewhere else, you feel sad, you even ask and maybe blame yourself. Try to remember they are escaping the pain of a trauma that occurred in their life. And they have to accept that and deal with that before they can move on and reconnect with the family. Reconnect with you as a friend. If you understand that, then you won't Take it in personally when this happens to you. And you don't give up on the individual. Because if it was you, you wouldn't want those that cared about you to give up on you. To summarize this video, take a look around you. Now, look at the individuals who are around you, the family and the friends and the co-workers and those who you care about, those who care about you. In 10 years, some of them will not be there. Some of them will be gone for a variety of reasons. Some may pass away. Some may move to another state. Others may go work abroad. Others may have just left your life and are no longer in that sort of close network of friends. For whatever reason, you and they have separated. Try to ask yourself, while you were together, what did they bring into your life? What positivity or negativity did they bring into your life? Now that they are gone, the same question. What positive has remained in your life because of that influence of them being in your life? Is there a lingering negativity that needs to still be forgiven and removed from your life? 
you will also separate from many of these individuals 10 years from now. What will they have gained from you? What will be their assessment of their time they spent and were associated and were friends and were close to you? I appreciate you taking some time to talk about these issues with me. Please leave a comment. I'm very interested to hear what your thoughts are on these matters. We will continue on every Saturday with this side series, again discussing Miyamoto Musashi's Dokoro teachings. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and aloha.